This is Floss Weekly. I'm Doc Searles. This week, Sean Powers and I talk with William Guo of Apache Sea Tunnel. Apache Sea Tunnel is a way to make all your databases, your multiple databases, work together in a synchronized way and has many more implications than I ever thought possible or Sean ever thought possible. And it turned into a very exciting show. And that is coming up next. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Floss Weekly, episode 743, recorded Wednesday, August 2nd, 2023. Data is surprisingly exciting. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support. Hello again, everyone, everywhere. Uh, this is Floss Weekly. I am Doc Searles. And this week, joined by Sean Powers himself. Hey! And there he is. We are actually relatively close. We're one state apart. We're in adjacent oh. states. I'm in Indiana. You're in Michigan. And uh, you're in green and I'm in orange, for those of you not watching. Is that orange or is that red? It looks red to it's, me. It's orange. It's actually orange. It's okay. a, it's a Firefox shirt that I, right. we with an Christmas older Firefox day. logo, one of several older Firefox logos. All right. Maybe it's because, it's, maybe it's the contrast with the, with the Fox. It makes it look it, red. It could me. be. Well, I, I think every screen is wrong also, you know, <laughs> so that may be another thing. <laughs> There's, there are ways of calibrating them, you know. I paid extra for one that said it was pre-calibrated, but I don't know. It doesn't look that arch on there either to me. I look at the shirt and I look at the screen. Eh, I don't know. So, so our, our, our guest today is uh, uh, William Guac uh, from uh, Apache's Sea uh, Tunnel uh, project, which I have compiled a whole lot of stuff on and don't understand well enough yet. So where, have you done your homework on this thing? I mean, so yes and no. Um, it, I mean, big data is, Big, right. I mean, there's a lot to to figure out there. I have I, I have questions in my in my youth, my youth. I don't know. In my yesteryear, you're still in it. Trust me. Uh, okay. All right. Well, I was a I was a database manager at a at a university, and we had this incredibly archaic database that we had to tie in with another more modern SQL database. And uh, basically, all my questions are going to be based around. Would this have made my job easier back in the day? And I'm pretty sure the answer is yes, but uh, that's the extent of my knowledge of big data is that it's a big pain in the butt. So hopefully this makes it less painful. Yeah, I, I'm intrigued by the uh, some of the claims that I saw or some of the stories I saw about it saying that it's actually cheap to run and you can use it on smaller projects. I'm very interested in what using it personally. <laughs> so that's an interesting thing. So um, we can go in lots of different directions with this. So uh, let me introduce our guest. It's uh, right. it's William Guac. Um, I'm hoping I get the pronunciation right. Uh, he's been an Apache Software Foundation member, um, a mentor with the Apache Sea Tunnel Project, Apache Dolphin Scheduler, uh, PMC uh, mentor member. That's a dolphin scheduler is another topic of conversation today. The initiator of the ClickHouse Chinese community. Uh, he is a graduate of the Peking University. He used to work as a big data director for Lenovo Research Institute and general manager of the Wanda e-commerce data department. And he's a visiting re visiting researcher at the Big Data Business Analysis Research Center of, of Renmin uh, University and has been committed to promoting the democratization of data capabilities and the development of open source projects globally. And so we with that as an inadequate introduction. Wait, introduce you should do him. like, yeah, you should do like 12 truths and a lie. And like, <laughs> and he has 27 toes on one foot. <laughs> hey, could be. So wel welcome, William. You're hello, hello, everyone. Yeah, yeah hello. <laughs> Glad to see you all. Yeah, <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. William. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so tell us a, a, a bit about a, Apache Sea Tunnel and what, what led to it? Because okay. I'm reading a dolphin dolphin scheduler is part of it. Um, 
Uh, so uh, give us kind of the overall thing and we'll dive down into parts of it. Okay. Okay. So Apache Citano, uh, it's a project that you can do a big data integration. And actually we can extract data from a different database uh, such as uh, MySQL, Oracle, or DB2, or, or AWS, Aurora, or even uh, some SaaS or CloudDB. Uh, and then you can load the data into another database such as uh, a Hive, Hadoop, or Redshift, or ClickHouse, or any database you, you want it. So I think it's a very, very good uh, open source project that you that can help you to extract data from uh, your uh, database to the other database. So that's as a uh, 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 Ap Apache Citano uh, projects. <laughs> so I am not a database uh, expert at all, but I do know that companies have always had a hard time integrating these things because there are yeah. many different fields, many different variables, many different conventions involved in them, many different ways of, of querying them. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I wonder how you pull all of those together and don't have a monster of some sort that is mm -hmm. too hard to get into. And I don't know. I, I mean, it, how, how does that look when, it, when you're done with it and, yeah, and you're ready yeah. to query Actually, it? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, I met a problem before because I I just want to uh, uh, synchronize data from uh, 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 AWS Aurora to AWS Redshift, and I used to use a, a tool called AWS DMS. That's a, a tool of uh, that AWS offered to me, but uh, I think it's not workable on that time. And also, I found that uh, there's many, many databases, not only AWS Aurora, but also we have uh, MongoDB, have uh, 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 AEO4j, there's an, uh, another kind of uh, uh, database. And also, we have uh, many, many data warehouse, uh, such as uh, Snowflake, uh, as you know, and also like uh, uh, Redshift and a Teradata and also Oracle. So, so there's so many databases. And I, what, what I just want to do is just uh, synchronize data from one database to the other. And I cannot find a very good, good tool to do that. So we have to, to build a, a synchronized tool that we call a water job as the, that's a former Citano uh, projects. And then, we found that everyone needs a prop, uh, that uh, tool that uh, synchronize data from different data sources. Perhaps uh, there's a Kafka, or perhaps there's a MongoDB, and perhaps it's uh, MySQL. So then we create an open source project called uh, Citano uh, that uh, let you to synchronize data uh, very easily. Uh, even uh, even you can use a, a draw a, a drag and drop. Uh, 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 drag and drop. Uh, I think a realization tools and uh, to do the synchronization. So that's why we create this uh, Citano. So uh, I think it's uh, easy for people that who are not uh, technical background, but 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 you want to synchronize data from uh, uh, one database to the other. Even you can. Uh, synchronize data from, uh, for example, for, from Notion to Google Doc, <laughs> if you want. So that's a different data sources. So uh, Citano help, will help you to do the synchronization uh, from any data source to the other data source. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Uh, and this is, yeah, again, I, I wish that I would have known you 10 years ago uh, because we could have solved some major problems for my job. But um, when you talk about synchronizing, synchronizing two different database types, is it uh, only a one-way synchronization? And if so, does that just mean you set up like two synchronizations, you know, one each way? Like, let's say I have uh, a SQL database and I want to sync it to uh, Fox Pro. I don't know. Again, databases aren't what I do right now, but um, uh, but you want any changes on the other side to also be reflected. You know, you just want to keep them in sync with each other. Is that is that like a one process thing, or uh, do you have to set up two jobs and 
like whichever happens first uh, and they just, you know what I mean? Is that, uh, is it two way or yeah. is it two one ways? I guess is the short. Yeah. Uh, very, very good question. For now it's a uh, one way synchronization, but uh, we, for synchronization, we have a uh, two kinds of synchronization. One kind, we call it a uh, uh, batch job. That means you, that uh, extract data and the load data for one, one for one time, and the other we call a real time synchronization. That means uh, you just can read the data from uh, from MySQL, for example, and we call it a CDC. That's a change data capture, and then you can load the data to AWS Redshift or Snowflake in real time. So this is another type of uh, data synchronization. So uh, this is the one-way synchronization, but uh, we can do it uh, uh, in real time now. It's uh, not only for the for the batch time for for the batch synchronization. So I think that's why many users of uh, Citano use Apache Citano to do the synchronization. Yeah, so it's a very good question. And uh, and um, now we didn't have a Fox Pro connector. But uh, I think now we use now people use a Snowflake, a Snow Snow a, a Snowflake, and then you can use uh, use Citano to extract data from a Notion or Google Doc or Excel, and uh, load them into a, a Snowflake very easily. <laughs> okay, so so it's basically they're one way, but you can set up multiples. Is that is that a fair? Answer to that question? Yes. Then? Okay. Yeah, um, you can have, have a multiple one. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, in the in the back, Jonathan and uh, Bennett and I were, were both thinking the same sort of thing. When there are conflicts with uh, that sort of a, like if, if there are synchronizations, two separate ones, you know, going, passing in the night, uh, how do you, how do you mm -hmm. deal with conflicts? Is it, is it timestamp based or, or how do those mm -hmm. conflicts uh, get handled? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a very good question that, uh, uh, sometimes we just uh, want to load the data to the target database, but there is some database uh, data already. So we have a, a mode called a save mode, and you can choose that you can choose, uh, you replace the, uh, the record, or you just uh, uh, update the record, or you just uh, delete the record. So you will have uh, some, uh, we call a save mode, to 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 handle the the issue that that you met, so um, I, and I think it's very easy for you to to choose that kind of mode. So so I think uh, uh, that's your answer. <laughs> that's, that's my answer. Okay, I, I guess that I guess that makes sense, and probably it depends on the the use case, like how you know if changes are made on both databases, and the hope is to get the the data current mm -hmm. in both. I assume timestamps must be at play. Like, okay, which which gets the, you know, preference for being stored? Um, I, I have, Doc. Do you have anything? I, I have so many questions, but I don't want to dominate all the. All the really, oh, those are all good. I'm what I'm not clear on again. I'm not a database person. Is what is the user looking at? Uh, I, I mean, you're, I mean, if you're mm -hmm. used to your Oracle database, your Mongo, or your MySQL. Mm -hmm. What are you looking at? Are you are you looking at the one your company normally uses for something, or are you looking at some other user interface that's unique to uh, yeah. CTunnel? Yeah, for for users of CTunnel, I think it's a data engineer. Uh, mm -hmm. So who want to handle the data? And uh, because in old days they have to write. Uh, a lot of codes <laughs> to handle the, the handle the uh, data synchronization uh, because there's no very good good tools uh, like uh, Citano to do the uh, synchronization between different databases. Now they just uh, drag and drop, or they can just write a SQL-like code to do the synchronization with uh, Apache Citano. So I think uh, Apache Citano is for uh, data engineer, especially for the uh, big data engineer, I think. Okay, so you mentioned engineers are the ones kind of doing this integration. And also I noticed in, in, your, in the background information that there's this field called data integration. Is the, and 
Mm-hmm. That's what this is in. And, and it's a new field. And who all is in that? And where does where does mm-hmm. the Apache Sea Tunnel fit into that? Yeah. Actually, uh, uh, we call that ETL. Uh, that means extract, uh, transform, and load. In old days, in I think in, in, in we call the data warehouse period. So we just extract data from Oracle, from DB2, and then load them into Teradata or or DB2 uh, data warehouse addition. But uh, in nowadays, we do in uh, different ways. We just uh, do the data capture in real time. And we load them into Snowflake in real time, and we do data analytics in real time. And uh, now we found uh, another very interesting story that so uh, many people use, uh, many developers try to use Citano uh, to synchronize data from uh, SaaS or from database and uh, to the target we call the ChatGPT. So ChatGPT is very hot, and uh, you know. ChatGPT is only know uh, only knows the knowledge from the internet, but uh, ChatGPT cannot chat with you with your data because ChatGPT do not know your data, or ChatGPT cannot uh, uh, know your, your your data in your database. But Cita know can extract data from uh, more than one hundred. Uh, uh, data sources, and we have a connector. Uh, uh, people just are doing, uh, just developing a, a connector for ChatGPT. Uh, when they finish, I think ChatGPT can just uh, 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 have a, a connector to your database, and then uh, ChatGPT can chat with you and with your data, no matter the data. Is in is on your Google Doc or Notion or in your Oracle or in your MySQL or MongoDB. So it's a very interesting idea. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, uh, all these the, the connector idea is is really cool. But so part of the the idea of a connector and there's like the the source and then the sink. Like right, the source is where the data is coming from. The sink is where the data ends up. Um, how how much transformation can take place in that interim step? And I, I realize this is mostly, you know, stream or real time kind of thing. Uh, and obviously mm-hmm. there has to be some translation because these are different data structures and stuff. But can yep. other transforms happen? I mean, can can you do stuff to make the data, you know, not just the different format, but actually have some transforms take place? Uh, in the interim, and I have a follow-up question because I, I think I know the answer there, uh, but is can stuff be done in the interim or, or not really? Or is it just a structure change? Uh, so we can do some uh, tra- transform between the source and the thing. And uh, first, because uh, different database will have a di- different uh, data type and uh, Citano engine will uh, transform the source data type into the uh, sync data type automatically. So you needn't to, to do the transformation about the data type. Uh, but you, if you have another uh, requirement about, you, I want to, for example, I want to change from zero to male and one to female, and uh, you can do your, uh, you can use a trans- transformer in Citano to do such, such of things. Actually, okay. you can use a SQL-like uh, code to do the tr- transform in Citano engine. Oh, that was that was the exact answer to my question then. So yeah, you, you can do transforms. And uh, you thought of a much better example. I couldn't think of an example off the top of my head. So yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> um, my, my follow-up question then uh, leads right up to that. Uh, this is something that the C-Tunnel engine does. Uh, but I noticed that uh, C-Tunnel as the, the whole entire project uh, can use the the newer C tunnel engine, but can also use Flink or it could use Spark. Uh-huh. What are the, I mean, 
Flink and Spark already have like people who are like, why would I ever use this over that? You know, why would I ever want to switch to, you know, Flink? Spark is everything I want. Uh, what mm -hmm. does C Tunnel add to that argument that makes it uh, a better fit for this? And, and if it's so much better, why are there options still to use Spark and or Flink? Yeah, it's a very, very good question. <laughs> because actually, uh, at the first, CTunnel support Flink and uh, Spark engine. But uh, we found that uh, uh, Spark and Flink is designed for, we call the computation. Mm -hmm. It's not designed for the synchronization. For example, uh, in, in, in our use case, our users will have uh, more than 1,000 tables, and uh, they want to synchronize the 1,000 table to the other database. Uh, but uh, if you use a Spark or Flink, there will be a lot of, we call the uh, GDBC connections uh, to, to, to handle with that. But uh, actually, that's a very heavy load for the source database. So uh, CTANO can uh, we, we create, we call a, a connection pool that you can reuse the, the, the GDBC connections, uh, so, something like that. And also there's another feature we call the um, schema evolution. Uh, that, that's a technical word. Well, what does that mean? That means if you change the data model from your source table and we want the same thing exactly happened to the target table, we call it the think table. So C, uh, Flink and uh, Spark is not designed for that because uh, Spark and Flink is designed for uh, the computation, for the group drawing, for the aggregation, and for, 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 for that. So uh, we have to design uh, another compu uh, uh, synchronization uh, engine, we call it Zeta, CTANO Zeta, to do the, the this kind of things. And uh, CTANO, this project is only designed for the synchronization. So the performance will be better because we do not care about uh, uh, computation or some uh, complex uh, 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 functions. So the performance will be better than Flink and Spark on synchronization user scenario. So okay. that's we have why 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 we have to to use Citano. <laughs> okay, good. So my my guess was um, the the implementation or the the ability to use Flink and or uh, Spark was that just because there wasn't a, a highly developed uh, C tunnel engine yet. I, they seemed an, an odd fit for yeah. you know for what C tunnel was designed for. I'm like, okay, cool. And then when I saw that you could use Flink or Spark, I was a little confused. Like, but that's not really what those do that's more like you know data extraction for like running you know real time whatever mm -hmm. you know I, I was a little surprised so so ideally uh the the c tunnel engine itself is is the better use case is that fair to say yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah. and okay. Uh, and also spark and flink they do not have a many source and a sync connectors you know so, yeah, I didn't realize so, that they did a sync at all. I mean, I thought it was like an extraction for their own. I didn't. Yeah. So that makes sense. And so the, um, yeah. the source and the sync, I don't know if they're plugins, I don't know the terminology, um, but mm -hmm. are those um, designed engine specific? So like there are C tunnel engine source and sync like code, but then if you want to use spark or flink, you have to use something specifically designed for those engines. Is that, so the the yeah. bulk of development is uh, towards the C tunnel engine. Uh, uh, the, uh, actually, uh, C tunnel engine. Uh, we call a C tunnel connectors. Sometimes we adopt a uh, 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 adopt a Spark and a Flink because somebody uses Spark and a Flink. But mm -hmm. uh, you if you if you use if you use Spark and a Flink. You will have you will you will not have the features such as uh, 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 schema evolution or uh, like uh, a better performance or like uh, some uh, some features. So actually, Citano support Flink and Spark, but also 
if you want to use a better performance or, or and a better functions, you can use the Citano engine itself. So Citano engine will help you to do uh, more. It will, it will offer you more uh, functions. Okay. Um, I, I'm sorry, this is just an add-on that I, for some reason popped into my head that I forgot to ask earlier. Um, are, mm -hmm. Can the, the, um, the flow, whatever the connection from one database to another, can it be one to many? Or is that another thing where you set up just mm -hmm. another connection, you know, like say we have our, you know, SQL database and I want it, you know, sent mm -hmm. to, to use your examples, like I want, you know, tables mm -hmm. put into Google Docs and I also want to set up to my Notion, you know, personal database. <laughs> is that, is it one to many or is it just, do I set up two different connections? Yeah, you, you can use one to many. We call oh, okay. it uh, load once and uh, sync many times. Oh, so nice. you you load from a, from a Google Doc or Kafka, then you can uh, sync them into Snowflake and into Redshift and into S3 on AWS. So uh, that's a, a feature for of uh, Citano. So you don't have to that's do three a, queries. Yeah. You can or whatever the terminology would be. You don't yeah, have to pull yeah. the data three times. Okay, that that's that's really yes, nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, so it's very interesting because I think uh, at the first time I think uh, synchronization is a uh, uh, very easy things. When, but we when we create a, uh, a party Citano, we found that uh, oh, uh, there's a lot of user scenario, and that's uh, quite different from a Flink and a Spark because synchronization yeah. is uh, another kind of uh, user user story. I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I never thought about. Spark and Flink is like cramming data back into a database. <laughs> that was I, again. That's why I didn't yeah. understand how they were engines in the same way that the C tunnel engine would have been. So yeah, I, thank you for the clarification there. Because yeah, I feel yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. it, the C tunnel engine is definitely the. I almost say C turtle every time. I don't know why, but the C tunnel <laughs> engine is definitely the, the next one, the <laughs> most efficient way to go. So thank you. <laughs> I think that's the next project. C turtle. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the sea turtle goes through the tunnel when he needs to. Um, I, um, I'm wondering because I'm, I'm quick reading about um, Spark and Flink because again I'm new to this stuff, and um, mm -hmm. I see in a piece about Spark and Flink those are also Apache projects, earlier Apache yeah. projects, I guess, and those are called third and fourth generation data processing frameworks. Mm -hmm. Does that make Sea Tunnel fifth generation? I'm not sure, or something, or a different species altogether. Uh, I think uh, uh, we. I, I I don't think it's a fifth uh, fifth mm -hmm. generation uh, because uh, I think a fifth generation will be another story. For example, uh, a quant compu uh, computation. <laughs> Perhaps that's a fifth com uh, a generation. But uh, for for Spark and a Flink. I think uh, uh, because they are focusing on uh, computation, just like you said, it's uh, data processing. And the data process, uh, processing is uh, quite different from a uh, data synchronization. So uh, actually, I think uh, uh, our projects is in different ways for from uh, yeah. Uh, Spark and Flink. <laughs> Although really, I, we can compute something. <laughs> so, so I'm wondering <laughs> if... Um, well, th this may be a self-answered question, given what you just said, that uh, um, when it's focused on processing the other and synchronization, do any of the same people that worked on Spark and Flink also work on on uh, C-Tunnel? Or is it a different set of, of experts mm -hmm. and forms of expertise? I guess a, a related question is there, where are you getting your developers and what are the, how are the, what are the developers working on? Mm -hmm. You know, what did it come out of? Yeah. I know that the, okay. the the dolphin thing was involved as part of it, so that may be a way to transfer into that question as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. actually, I think uh, uh, for the developers, we call the uh, contributors of uh, open source project. Uh, some of uh, Flink and Spark contributors are in Apache Citano and uh, contribute code because they need Citano to synchronize data from a data uh, from a data source to to the uh, target target database and then they will use flink or spark to do the data processing so actually 
in uh in in our users uh yeah actually our users are using both Citano and Flink or Spark to do the uh, uh, the data synchronization and the data processing. Because you, when you do the data processing, you have to store the data in one database. So you have to have to extract data from a different database and load them into that one database, such as such as a Snowflake or a, a Delta Lake. For for the data breaks, so that's what that's what Citano uh, do doing, and uh, when they load the the data into the one database, they can use a Spark to do the computation or to to do the uh, to use the Flink to do the uh, 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 the real time processing. So uh, actually, we we are not uh, competitors. <laughs> We are uh, we uh, we we are the something uh, they are after after our projects. <laughs> so speaking of developers, um, again, I I keep thinking about myself because that's apparently how I I think. But um, there the database that I I had to struggle with at my when I was the manager of a database department was I'll even say I'll call them out. It was this software that was developed by Datatel. Uh, and in the, the program is called Colleague. It was bought by Lucian. But uh, nonetheless, this database, which was designed in the 80s, had a really, really uh, weird, non-compatible with anything SQL. It had like multi-value fields. It was just a weird database, okay? Um, mm -hmm. And so there was this ridiculously complicated spaghetti of a database interaction that was just custom designed because something like C-Tunnel didn't exist. Mm -hmm. My question is, if I were to tackle this today, um, are the the connectors, I think that's the proper term, are the connectors modular? Is that something that somebody could develop a, you know, their own connector to a database and and use that with C-Tunnel? Or is it is it not modular where a person could develop something for their own ridiculous backend database that they want to, you know, synchronize with a more modern version? It, it, we literally had to run it in this like, old VM. It, it was like uh, Star Trek, you know, Star Trek one with like Voyager is like in the middle of this enormous alien like monstrosity. Uh -huh, yeah. That's basically what this database thing was like a tiny VM with this old database. And we had to figure out a way to connect to it. It was miserable. So is it modular to connect to things like that? Uh, actually, everyone can contribute connector to Citano. And uh, actually, we we have a very good example. Uh, there is a database called uh, Infomix. It's uh, a very old uh, database. I think uh, uh, that database age is more is older than I. I think <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. So many people want to. Uh, some people actually. Some people use that uh, old database, and they want to. Synchronization, synchronize the data from this old database and to uh, Oracle actually, and then they they can use Oracle instead of uh, Infomix. So Citano can do this kind of things, and uh, someone develop a, a connector for the uh, Infomix and let people to can do the real time synchronization from uh, Infomix to Oracle, then. Uh, then the application uh, uh, based on the uh, Infomix, they can change the application. Uh, they, they, they design another application based on Oracle. Then they can transfer uh, from uh, Infomix to Oracle. So I think that's a, a example for, for your question. Everyone can contribute uh, a connector to Citano. And then because it's open source projects, and uh, then everyone else who will have the same issue can use this connector to solve the problem we, we met. So everyone can solve that kind, kind of a problem. <laughs> okay, yeah. That, that's, yeah, that's awesome. And then the, in your example though, like, so there's this older database that some applications mm -hmm. connect directly to, and then they want to synchronize that with an Oracle database. So some other newer front end, whatever, you know, could connect to it. Uh, that kind of leads back to my original question about two-way synchronization. Would there just be then 
mm-hmm. two setups. I mean, if somebody's working on the Oracle database and they make a change and they wanted that reflected back in that older database, would there be like mm-hmm. two different connectors or two different, not connectors, I'm sorry, but two different synchronizations taking place? Uh-huh. Uh, we, or would it be we, read we only? Can, we, yeah, we don't, we don't suggest to do that because uh, uh, I, actually the things will be like that. Uh, people will do do the new things in in the new database, and they do not uh, insert or feedback the data back to the old database. So it is a one way one way uh, one way synchronization. They only want the old data to the new database. And if you have a two way synchronization, uh, I think uh, that that will confuse that. That, that will confuse the, the, the system because uh, I don't know, the system will not know this new record is from the old database or from the new database. I think uh, it's, it's not, it's not uh, 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 I, I, I didn't met that, that kind of a scenario before. Okay. <laughs> so oh, I, I guess think a one way synchronization is good. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm glad we went, I'm glad we talked about it because that, that was my, my original question. You know, I mean, uh-huh. And if if it did two way, how how would it handle conflicts? Because you know I see a whole bunch of like uh, problems okay. that could that could happen there. But I also I mean again in my use case the the two way synchronization would have been great because when we developed uh, you know programs or yeah. interfaces we did not want to hook to that old archaic database yeah. directly because nobody in who was alive even knew how to program it. But also we needed to get data back and forth from it. So yep. it was it was tough. Yeah, it's a very good good question now. Or well, it's a very good requirement. Uh, we can consider it in, in the later time. And yeah. uh, now I think there may be a solution that uh, you will have a third uh, data store like a Kafka. And uh, you, this two database, can do the two-way synchronization between Kafka and the two uh, different databases. So I think uh, perhaps that's a solution for, for your question. But uh, uh, I think there will be some, some solution for, for the requirement that you mentioned. <laughs> yeah. and, and for I, what it's I worth, figure it out. <laughs> for what it's worth, I'm not going back to that job. So I don't, I don't really need a solution. <laughs> T- 10 yeah. years ago, Sean needed a solution. And I left the job. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a very it's, interesting question. So, I'm I'm wondering um, uh, again, as a an outsider to this, um, a couple of things. One is the the there's the connector API, and that is somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and somebody using this synchronized database, like a master database. Um, must call it something. Do they call it? I mean, it, does it, is it known as the C tunnel database? They call it. I've got a C tunnel here. We've got all these databases, and I'm using my C tunnel. Is that how? Mm-hmm. Is that how a a company or a user or a customer? I you don't really have customers, I suppose, but you know, somebody, you know, some company using C tunnel. What do they call that? Mm-hmm. And and where does it live? I mean, it may live in a cloud off somewhere. I'm I'm not sure. Uh, actually, uh, many, many companies use uh, Citano. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think uh, uh, in America, there's a, a bank uh, called uh, Goldman Sachs, I think, or, or, or another investment bank. And they use Citano to extract data from, uh, uh, f- from uh, their, their uh, from uh, AWS Aurora to AWS uh, uh, Redshift. Uh, mm-hmm. And many other uh, companies, such as uh, Billy Billy, that's uh, 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 a, a video company, just like uh, YouTube. <laughs> and mm-hmm. also we have uh, VIP.com, that's a company uh, just like uh, Amazon, but uh, it's uh, a smaller one. Uh, so they, they just synchronize data from uh, different databases. And now, I think uh, there's uh, some user in the, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you can see. The, uh, there's uh, many, many uh, company, I think there are internet companies. Uh, that's a JP Morgan, sorry. It's not a Goldman Sachs, mm-hmm. it's a JP Morgan. Good. And uh, many internet company, such like uh, Badance, that's a TikTok, you know? So, and also there's many 
uh, other company, both in uh, Japan, in China, in Singapore, and uh, uh, also some users in, in America. So I think uh, most of them are internet company because uh, they use uh, cloud and uh, cloud. There's many cloud, new cloud uh, database, and uh, uh, there's no very good uh, uh, open source project to, for the cloud database in synchronization. So they are using Citano to solve that that kind of things, and uh, we I know there's many many old software such as uh, Tailand and Informatica, which is in North American and in Europe. Uh, but uh, this kind of uh, tools will not support uh, a cloud database very well. So that's why there's many internet company you use Citano. And also because Citano is open source, it's a free, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In some ways, it makes it harder to track, I suppose. You know, somebody could be using it and, you know, they're not paying customers. They're not necessarily in your base. But I mentioned yeah. they, could, they could have, might have developers on the case. Well, I know Sean has a question, but we need to take a break and we'll be back right after this. Okay, so... Um, again, I just have so many questions and I didn't think I was going to, but uh, I, I really enjoyed the conversation here. So let's say I'm using C-Tunnel and, and I assume I could run like C-Tunnel like in a Docker container or something. I, you know, I assume it's just an engine that's running and then it, it talks to the different, you know, data sources um, and syncs. Um, is, is it an all or nothing? Like if, if I have a, a database, do I have to then keep the entire database and sync across the connector can i can i do piecemeal like can i say I, you know only this part of the database i want synced with you know this sync over here like i want i want my contact database kept in sync with my notion address book or whatever and just have that stay in sync and if so i assume yes i mean it, it would be silly if i could only do the entire database but um how what, what triggers the sync is this is this something that um, does C-Tunnel stay connected to the data source watching for a change or is there something that has to trigger C-Tunnel? You know, do you send data to mm -hmm. it? How, how does that connection actually happen? Yeah, yeah very good question. <laughs> uh, there's uh, two ways. One way we call the batch job. That means you have to trigger the C-Tunnel to extract data from database and the load into the other database. And you can use uh, Airflow or Dolphin Scheduler to trigger that batch job. So uh, we call the, that's a job, uh, uh, job orchestration tools. So there's another, uh, you can use another uh, orchestration tool such as uh, Cita, uh, Airflow or Dolphin Scheduler to trigger that. And, or if you have a real-time job, we call it uh, real-time data synchronization. And uh, then the CTANO will watch the, uh, the original database. If you have uh, some uh, new records or you change some uh, uh, data, data records, the CTANO will know that and will synchronize the data into your database in, in, in no more than one second. So there's uh, two walkways for CTANO. So, okay. so I think uh, that's for your question. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a downside to having C tunnel? You know, to take out that extra tool, like you know the the Dolphin scheduler or, or Airflow. Is there a, a downside to having uh, C tunnel monitor directly itself for that real time change? I mean, is that a performant hit mm. on the on the source database, um, okay. or is it just if you're already using something like Dolphin scheduler to do these you know these batch changes, you just want to do that? Um, is there, I guess, is there a best practice or is it all just dependent on what kind of data you're working with? Yeah. yeah. If, if you don't want to the, do the real-time, if you don't want to get the real-time data, you need to use the real-time um, uh, real mode. Because I think uh, for the real-time mode, uh, it will affect some uh, regi uh, regional database performance. But it's uh, it's very tiny because we we do not read the database. We read we call it we read the database bin log. Bin log means uh, uh, that's a, a file that is not a, a database. 
So we read the bin log and the, or we read the redo log. So that will affect some uh, uh, deep scale, but uh, I think it's not will uh, affect the database for one very much. So, um, so it doesn't actually, have a, yeah. yeah, it doesn't connect to the database unless it detects something that it yes. would want from the, from the logs. Okay. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Yeah. And then, yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess with something like a like Dolphin Scheduler, there would be no connection at all. And then would Dolphin actually pass the data or would it just trigger C tunnel to then come in and and grab the data? Yeah. Dolphin Scheduler is just the orchestration tools. It's uh, just to trigger the C tunnel. And okay. also it can trigger Spark or have or other or or EMR on AWS. It's orchestration tools. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I guess I, I see why you could do it two different ways. And probably the performance isn't drastically better one way or the other. Um, yeah. Okay. Because you have a lot of data, you have to extract the, extract the data in batch mode because the, the data is uh, too big. <laughs> yeah, that makes so sense if your too. data is not so big, you can do it uh, in real-time mode. Yeah. yeah. If you're watching one field, you wouldn't have to do like a batch for you know, oh, one yeah. name change. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's a couple of questions on the, in the back channel. Um, uh, after somebody says they want to do work only with cool sounding names and C tunnels <laughs> on that list, um, is there a chance for errors with a sync that fast? And did they already talk rollback on of transactions? Um mm especially if someone has some files open at the time uh, the sync happens. So, mm -hmm. so can you address those? That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is also a very good question. Uh, actually, uh, Citano is can deploy on one server or in, in the cluster mode. And we, we call, we have a, a global snapshot uh, tech, tech technique. That means, if the some error happened and uh, the whole uh, data synchronization process will roll back to the last global snapshot we 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 call it a checkpoint so uh, the if if some error happened so we will roll back to the last checkpoint so you needn't to worry about uh, you will lose uh, some some data because we will have many many checkpoints uh, when you do the synchronization and uh, you can define the checkpoint by yourself for example you can define uh, uh one uh, 30 second 30 seconds you make a one checkpoint or you you can define 100 records then you make a checkpoint so uh, the data will will not be uh, be missed uh, between data database synchronization because we have a, a we call it distributed uh, checkpoint and uh, uh, we have a rollback a rollback engine a rollback uh, 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 function to to assure that data will not be loose. Yeah, so <laughs> so this is a very good question and also we have uh, some. Uh, some other functions to assure that the uh, data will do uh, will read the data again and uh, to 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 synchronize from the last checkpoint to the to 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 the other uh, to to the future uh, data synchronization. So C Tano will assure that uh, the data will synchronize from the source to the target exactly once we cut exactly once. It will not will not be uh, double your data, or will not your data will be not lost, unless you're Sean and you're trying to sync data two ways at the same time. In which case, <laughs> all bets are off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, I I have a question that uh, there was a piece um, written by uh, somebody with the Dolphin, uh, the, the Apache Dolphin scheduler, that has a very provocative headline, uh, train your own private chat GPT model for the cost of a Starbucks coffee. And I'll read the, yeah. Um, yeah. the paragraph that opens that. You can own your own trained open source, large scale model. It can be fine tuned according to different training data directions. 
to enhance various skills such as medical programming, stock trading, love advice, making your large scale model more understanding of you. Let's try training. And then it, it goes into how you can do that. And I have a particular question about that because I want my own um, mm-hmm. I want my own chat bot on my own data in my house, in my household, all my property, all my health records, all my financial records, all my contacts and calendars, my travels, where I've been, you know, like, where was I when I had that medical thing that happened? Um, you know, and what doctors did I see about that? I mean, I'm just making that up, but, but those are the kind of things I, I think when the likes of chat GPT um, become relevant to individuals is going to, I think we're sort of at a moment now where we will start having our own databases in our house and in, in our homes that are not relevant to the world. And it, we, we think about these easily for companies because companies have gigantic databases in most cases and wish to know a lot about themselves and it would apply there. And that's probably where most of the uses are going to be early on. But um, I, I was thinking we had a, a company on here a few weeks ago talking about control planes. It was called cross plane and it was about doing, you have multiple control planes within, within a company. Um, and we have control planes in our own lives. And I'm thinking, Hmm, this seems relevant to me, especially when you're saying it's cheap. Do so you have any thoughts about that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, we call the private uh, uh, IOM because uh, uh, you what you need is uh, only a GPU better than uh, three zero nine zero. Then you can use a Dolphin scheduler to train your own ChatGPT with that uh, GPU. Yeah, I think it's uh, about a uh, uh, two to uh, twenty four hours. You you can chat your train your own ChatGPT. Uh, but uh, what you need to do is to prepare the data and uh, to let the open source uh, large model uh, for for example Llama or Llama two, and uh, uh, Dolphin scheduler will download the Llama or Llama 2 automatically, and uh, it will help you to train with your personal data in your own personal computer or personal laptop uh, or desktop to, to train your own ChatGPT. And you can just uh, to, to use Dolphin Scheduler to train the whole private model. And you can use the private model at your home. You didn't uh, to to worry about the, the data leak or or your personal data will upload to something something uh, somewhere else because uh, it's uh, training you you can training the data you can train your data in your own laptop <laughs> so this is a very interesting one <laughs> this is something i very much want we um at uh, at the distributed web camp a few weeks ago, and I mentioned this on earlier shows, but it's worth bringing up again. Um, one of the hackers among us took um, everything I'd written for Linux Journal, where Sean and I both used to work for over 24 years. I wrote many, many articles um, and had it query those. In other words, it trained on those. I don't know what model he used, whether it was Llama or ChatGPT. Um, but there was one and it gave good answers and it put them in the form of a haiku as well. Um, it gave you like the complete answer and then this haiku and was remarkably right and, and, uh, and, and helpful. And that was just one thing. I mean, one could actually look back through all of one's emails, you know, and you know, how many times did I talk to Sean, you know, when, 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 when did this come up? You know, I mean, with, even with, I'd love to have it for, We've done this show for 16 years. It'd be really great to go back and say, "Hey, you know, when when, when did we last talk to to William? You know, when did we last talk to so and so? Who would we want to have back? And you know, what questions were left unanswered? I mean, there are lots of possibilities there, and and until you know, I, I started learning about this, I wasn't thinking about how possible this was at a relatively low cost. So that's yeah, intriguing. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I think uh, Dolphin Scheduler can uh, can let almost everyone can have their private uh, 
ChatGPT. But I think the hard part is to prepare the data. I think the yeah. data preparation is hard. So uh, some people are doing uh, are, are creating a, a connector in Citano to for the preparing data. For example, you can extract data from uh, your PowerPoint or from your Word, and then to do the data preparation for the Llama. And uh, then you can train in the Llama with the Dolphin scheduler, and then you can have your own private chat GPT. But uh, I think uh, uh, I think it's, it's hard. <laughs> but if 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 he succeeds, I think uh, everyone will be happy because everyone can do the data preparation very easily. But for now, they are doing that pro kind of project, uh, doing that uh, uh, connectors. I think. <laughs> we're we're getting down toward the end of our hour and um uh and there are so many i mean i took so many notes and prep for this thing and but probably that there, there are two questions we tend to end with one is are there any questions we haven't asked so far that you really like us to have answered to ask you so we can cover that before we come out mm. I, I think uh, uh, I, I don't know uh, people. There's a question for 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 the PMCs. Uh, I don't know people like to use a code SQL like code to do the uh, data synchronization, or they want to use a UI just like a drag and a drop <laughs> to 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 the synchronization. So that's a question for 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 the audience. Actually, actually, I think mm -hmm. uh, if if they have the answers, they can tell me. <laughs> well, we have a dozen thousand of those or so. So maybe maybe one of them will. Um, one last one, which actually Jonathan Bennett, another another co-host who we mentioned earlier here and who has been on our chat, um, often brings up, which is, what is the weirdest use you've seen so far? <laughs> what What's really unusual uh -huh. or stands out as a as an exception? Um, actually, um, uh, actually, I I think the most weird thing I, I met in this project is uh, we I, we I think the connectors uh, will be uh, growing slowly. Actually, I think uh, because when we enter the Apache incubator, we only have uh, 20 connectors, actually. And uh, we just uh, double that uh, uh, connectors in one year uh, from uh, 20 to 40 in our company. But actually, uh, now it has more than 100 connectors. And I think the 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 power of open source community is is more powerful than I think I think, and so I think is uh, is is interesting because I never think that uh, the connectors will grow so much, and I never thought uh, there is will be so many users who want who can contribute their connectors to these open source projects. I think so. So I think it's a little word for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's well, that's great. And um, and given that it's growing that fast, and uh, and given that we will have C tunnel running in a year or two <laughs> or less, maybe yeah. if yeah. <laughs> if we follow that path, we'll be able to uh, see how far it's gone and have you back on on a future show. That'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. So so our goal is um, connect. Uh, every data source in the world <laughs> so i think yes, <laughs> that will be that'll be great <laughs> yeah <laughs> get them all Th thank thanks so much william for having for being on the show yeah thank you and we will yeah. have to have you back yeah Th thank you everyone thank you thank you so sean uh I surprised myself with how many questions I had and how much I <laughs> wished that I had met William 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Even and I, I didn't know that Ant was 
was producing the show was also involved in that was actually glad to get away from databases at some point. Yeah, you can tell he worked in databases because he's generally angry. That was a great conversation, but I got to tell you, I was sweating a little bit over here. PTSD. <laughs> oh, boy. Me too. The I, I ex- yeah. I expect to have nightmares about databases tonight uh, when, I, when I drift off to sleep. <laughs> But um, I'm still fascinating, though. Um, and yeah, if I mean, uh, big data is not going anywhere, right? I mean, our whole world is data. So the idea of being able to connect different data sources, especially crazy, wacky ones, and it sounds like the number of connectors is just, you know, off the charts. It's, it is exciting. It's, it's surprising that I'm this interested and excited about database connections, right? I mean, <laughs> on the tin, that doesn't sound like an exciting podcast topic, but it was, it's pretty cool when you think about what's actually happening behind the scenes. Well, it's, uh, I, and I found it quite exciting. And um, I, I, of course, I don't have any PTSD from dealing with databases <laughs> other than, you know, my own. I mean, Wait I just minute, uh, you didn't I, spend a whole weekend worrying about ODBC and JDBC and, and, and just oh, no, every I, I, come Saturday that you're having a great time and all of a sudden something just crashes and you get that phone call. And yeah, you, really? You didn't have that problem, Doc? Never? No, I didn't. I, my, my problem has always been I have too many drives laying around that have my photography on them. And so that's why I now have this eight terabyte laptop that's filled completely. <laughs> and, but I don't see that as a database. So it is in a way. I mean, I just know it's a directory I have well, to navigate. It's a different thing. If you write a connector, you could put that into any sort of database you want. Because I, I know could, a tool. I could. That's it's Sea Turtle. Question. No, it's not Sea Turtle. Uh, I mean, it's, it's an interesting thought. I mean, we, we're never going to get rid of databases after all we are digital, digital animals now. And, uh, and, uh, entire, our corporations are digital, our governments are digital, all of it's digital. So now don't get me wrong. I'm totally for databases and the advantages that they bring to day-to-day life, especially you talking about being able to build a large language model and being able to query it just to get stuff that you want i want i mean right that's the stuff i want there. i mean I, yeah you know yeah, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm all for that just you know i love data um i just don't miss the management side of it that's all i'm saying yeah this is and, and this, same and that was the thing i wasn't the database like i wasn't the database person i was the manager so not only did I, like all the when things went wrong it was i had to fix it but i also wasn't the person who could fix it so yeah that's it's stressful Databases can be stressful. I, on another podcast uh, I was listening to, because that's all you listen to now is podcasts. Uh, there, um, the, the host there said, I forget who it was. They were talking about a chief digital officer, like some companies have a di- chief digital officer. And this guy said, well, isn't that like having a chief electricity officer now? <laughs> because it's all digital. There's no other kind of, kind of thing. So, um, so I, I want to I want to plug next week. We have um, uh, Damien Real on our spelled R I E H L. He is this really smart lawyer, open source friendly. He's big in the music business. Um, he's on a. I've actually had, I saw what he wrote. It was really interesting stuff. And I dragged him onto another a list I'm on, where he is just killing it. He's really smart and. Uh, Catherine, who will be the co-host, and I have had him on also on another on our own little podcast. So he's a good guy. He's going to be up next week. Catherine's going to co-host. So I want to plug that. I want to ask legal questions, all kinds of topics. He's your guy. He's a good guy. So what do you got to plug there, Sean? Uh, just uh, not yourself? anything special on my YouTube channel, youtube.com mm-hmm. forward slash Sean Powers with a zero. There, there it is. Yeah. So uh, are you still yeah. doing the cartoon? And, and we got the book out. I haven't had a chance to, and I, I, it still bums me out. Um, I just, I still can't seem to get enough hours in a day since I had COVID. I don't think I have long COVID, but for some reason, I just cannot get the, uh, I, I need more sleep now. And that time that I spend sleeping is when I used to draw my comic every morning. Uh, so maybe someday it'll happen. I hope so. But uh, I haven't drawn my comic in a while. I, I had the lamest COVID, COVID anybody had, which is I had sniffles. I asked my daughter if she had a test. I tested positive. 
She banished me to the basement, but I had no other symptoms. That was the end of it. Wow. <laughs> Nothing happened. I'm so, jealous. <laughs> I know. There's so many bad stories, but mine wasn't one of them. Anyhow, so again, next week, see you next week with Damien Real. Uh, I'm Doc Searles. This is Floss Weekly. We'll see you then. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, Editor-in-Chief of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I join with my co-host to bring you This Week in Space, the latest and greatest news from the final frontier. We talk to NASA chiefs, space scientists, engineers, educators, and artists, and sometimes we just shoot the breeze over what's hot and what's not in space, books, and TV. And we do it all for you, our fellow true believers. So whether you're an armchair adventurer or waiting for your turn to grab a slot in Elon's Mars rocket, join us on This Week in Space and be part of the greatest adventure of all time.